This conference is very important and could not be more timely because we are facing a very rapidly changing world with greater needs and greater limitations for de delivering on human well-being. You look at demographic trends, you look at increasing resource scarcity, you look at climate change impacts, you look at the fact that you have a growing middle class with rising expectations in terms of consumption patterns, and all of that simply does not add up to a viable planet. It also doesn't add up to a planet that's equal. Inequity is something that will, is likely to grow unless we address root causes. And we will not really be able to eradicate poverty irreversibly, as we've all signed on to do. So planetary security is really about how to ensure a long-term viable future, not only for human beings, but most also for the ecosystem services and for the rest of the planet with whom we happen to share and call this home. It really is about socio-economic development, but understanding that long-term socio-economic development has to be underpinned by a very resilient environment. Um, it's finally understanding that environment is not something marginal to development, but is something that is at the very heart and the core of development. And in today's world, this is very much needed, and I commend very much the Dutch government for their foresight and their leadership in taking this uh, concept and convening this really quite extraordinary conference. The bank, the World Bank has, I think, a very key role because we're looking at implementing uh, solutions that are ever more complex. I think there's an understanding now that sectoral responses, that sectoral biases will uh, possibly lock us into development trajectories that are not optimal. In the world, in the complex world that we're moving into, we have to see how we better manage trade-offs, how we have more integrated planning. It's what's being called for in the SDG framework and increasingly as we come out of COP21 in order to deliver on low res um, resilient and low carbon economies. It will also call for these whole of system, whole economy approaches. And the bank is uniquely positioned to do that, both in terms of how it's structured. We have 14 global practices with great technical depth and the capacity to address these many different issues, but to do so in a really integrated way. So that's one aspect. And the other one is simply that the bank has incredible muscle and scope. We can really go to scale. And there really is an issue of urgency. A lot of these uh, opportunities for the right kinds of investments and the right kind of policies need to be put in place now. And the bank can support its client countries to come up with more optimal development options and trajectories. So I think that the bank can help countries move from development outcomes to long-term development trajectories that deliver greater benefits. You need an institution with the depth and the breadth and the scope of the bank to really be able to do that. Um, and another key aspect I would say is that we really are global, so we can take what has worked in Bangladesh and apply it to the Philippines. What's worked in the Philippines might be incredibly relevant for Uruguay. What's worked in Uruguay might be very relevant for work that we're doing in Cote d'Ivoire. It's really being able to have that global platform of what works and what doesn't work because we really, we have proof of concept of a lot of things that have gone right and have worked. And we really don't have time now for pilots. We really have to go to scale and address these root causes from the ground up. A lot of good work's been done, and we need to capitalize on that.